Hey guys, it's Sharon here and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be slightly different. Um, I normally do coloring related videos, adult coloring, as well as the journaling stuff as well. But my viewers have been asking me to do some crochet videos. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to try a crochet and chat today. So um, for those of you that may be in the crochet world that just kind of wandered onto my channel. Uh, again, my name is Sharon, um, Sweet Nightingale 1973. And so I, like I said, mainly just do a lot of um, Amazon hauls, like with coloring and journals, and I do color and gabs and stuff. But since I'm kind of doing this crochet thing, um, pretty much like almost for the first time, I did a little bit of crocheting in another haul video that I had done. Um, we're going to try this crochet and chat. We're going to experiment with different angles and stuff. So what we're going to look at today is my hands as I crochet. And for those of you that have looked at my one haul video that I had put up recently, um, I started this blanket, and I'm sitting here on my couch, and I'm very very comfy here so we're gonna try to do this on my couch um, while I am covered up with my comfy panda blanket and then I have this blanket just kind of sitting on my lap here that I'm crocheting so it's not quite a blanket yet but that's what the finished product is gonna be so it's basically just a a blanket with red and white stripes and so what I have here is six rows of um, I'm alternating double crochets with half double crochets and just doing that for each row and then for the white I have four um, rows of the white and I'm doing the same thing the only difference is just the red is going to be six rows the white is four rows just to kind of give it a little bit of variety very very simple pattern very easy and what I'm using uh, what I normally use for blankets um, because they do use up a lot of yarn is um, I normally will use this um, Red Heart um, Super Saver yarn and I have all kinds of colors in that, but we're working with cherry red, and then we are working with white as well. Okay, so anyway, what we're gonna do is I'm just going to show my hands crocheting, and we're just going to just chat a little bit as we do this. Um, I've not, I've done a color and gab, but have never really done the crochet stuff. Now, for those of you in the crochet world that have wandered onto this channel, I crochet a little bit differently. Now, normally what people do is they kind of hold the yarn, I guess, kind of like this, and they, uh, their left hand does not move, but the right hand just kind of does the whole hooking and stuff. But I do it a little bit differently. I find that this method works uh, best for me, and my stitches, you know, still come out really, you know, you know, they still look good. <laughs> so uh, let me just show you what I do. Now, my left hand is actually going to move quite a bit. So um, instead of, it, it's almost kind of like I'm doing left hand knitting just a little bit, but my left hand is going to move a lot. And then um, the, of course, the right hand just pulls the, the yarn through here. But so you're going to see my left hand moving a lot in here, okay? So, but I found that this method works best for me. Um, I mainly do a lot of my crocheting by feel, although sometimes I will look. Um, I do have a visual impairment, so I was told my coloring people that when I'm doing my coloring gaps, I do have, you know, I'm doing this with the visual impairment. So, um, and I'm going to move my camera just slightly. There we go. Um, I am doing this with the visual impairment, so I tend to just, you know, kind of do a lot by feel. And I, like I said, I just find that this method works um, easiest for me. So I hold my yarn pretty much in the traditional way um, with my left hand. It just kind of goes a little bit lower, I think, on my finger than, um, you know, than kind of sitting up high like so. And then I hold my yarn like I'm holding a you know a, a fork or something there's some people that will hold the yarn you know or hold the crochet hook I mean like you know like a knife and I've, I've tried to do that but I found it just kind of clunky for me but um, you know there is it's you know that's a perfectly good way too but I tend to do it like this okay all right so let's go ahead and get on with the with the chat now I'm just doing my rows of half double crochets here and so um this blanket is going to be for a full-size bed. Now, um, we have a queen bed in our bedroom. However, um, I had started making this blanket when I was at Leader Dog training for my new guide dog, uh, my new Leader Dog. And those of you that have been on my channel uh, will know about him, and I'm just pulling out some yarn. Those of you that have been on my channel um, will uh, definitely know about him. But for those of you that are new, um, he is, um, I'm on my fourth leader dog, my 
golden retriever Caleb had just retired and we still have him. He still lives at home with us here. But um, my new one, now Caleb is a golden retriever. He's 10 and a half. And my new one is a 17 month old. He was 16 months old when I got him. <laughs> but he is a 17 months old golden retriever. His full name is Alexander Graham Bell. <laughs> and uh, we call him Alex. And his puppy raisers, you know, those are the people that have the dogs for the first year of their life. And they do the basic obedience and, and a little bit of uh, social, you know, they do the socialization and, and so forth. And so they raise all male golden retrievers and they uh, name them after influential people. Okay. So that is how, whoops, that is how that works. And so I was in Michigan training with him for two and a half to three weeks. And so I got, I did not, I, I was, I flew up there, but my husband picked uh, myself and a friend of mine up that was also in the same class with me. So um, when I flew, I just didn't have the room to bring any of my crochet stuff or any of my yarn. And I'm hitting the tripod. I do apologize. I didn't have any room to bring any of my stuff with me. So I ended up having to purchase some things while I was there. And so I purchased the red and white yarn it needed to make this blanket so I started making this and I measured it for the full size bed I was thinking that you know um, I would have a, a little bit more I guess time as we sat to get a little bit further than I was in this project but um, it didn't happen that way um, but anyway um, this is going to be for the size of a full size bed however I'm going to just I'm going to use it to just cuddle you know just kind of one of those like cuddly blankets for you know one of those cold days which we're going to be getting or we, I think we have started with that because it's been just cold and yucky and rainy the last few days here. Um, which really stinks. <laughs> yeah, really, really stinks. So, um, when I got home with Alex, I want to say I got home on the um, 14th. We were home a couple of days and... Uh, gosh. So we were home a couple of days and then um, we had to go back up to Michigan to Leader Dog because um, I'm in the Lions Club. I'm a very active Lions Club member and there's a board of directors that I sit on for um, one of our Lions Foundations and so um, our board members went back or I should say not go back, but I was back at Leader Dog because our board of directors went to Leader Dog to spend a day there um, to learn more about that program because, you know, a lot of the clubs around here, they will send money, you know, they'll donate money to, um, you know, to Leader Dog so that they can run their services and stuff. And so I um, went back with the, you know, with the board of, of uh, we call it board of trustees. And um, so... We took a charter bus because it's a it's a bit of a long trip, a bit of a long haul. So we rented a charter bus and we took we took the one day to travel. We traveled the one day there and then we spent the day and then we took the um, the day after to go home. So we were gone basically three days for that little excursion. Um and so um, Alex did great on that trip. <laughs> I don't know what was going through his head, like probably like, why am I back here? You know, kind of thing. But, um, you know, he, um, he uh, you know, stayed with me throughout the whole day, except when we took the tour of, um, it used to be the kennels, you know, where, where all the dogs stay, but now they've totally revamped it. And so now it's referred to as the Canine Development Center. Very fancy dancy name, but um, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a sending your dog to the Ritz Carlton for canines. <laughs> but um, yeah, because it's it's pretty nice, very nice, very sterile, you know. So he didn't get to go back there when we did the tour because they don't allow um, outside dogs in there, um, you know, once they've been out into the real world. Um, and if a dog like has to come back because they're sick or something, you know, then, um, they have a, they have a certain area for that until they discover that they don't have any communicable, communicable diseases, you know, kind of thing. Cause their whole object is to keep things nice and sterile and to keep, you know, um, 
contamin- contamination, oh boy, uh, to keep contamination away from other dogs, you know, so that nobody gets sick, you know, kind of thing. So, but it was, you know, I think everybody enjoyed it. Um, they were very impressed by what they saw. And it was just kind of, uh, it's always nice to go back there because I do um, enjoy going back and, and uh, you know, talking to, you know, different people that work there and so forth. Um, I did not see Alex's trainer on um, this little excursion, uh, his instructor, uh, my instructor, um, because we, um, that wasn't what we were there for. Um, we just saw the people that do the philanthropy kind of stuff. Those are the people that do the outreach, you know, to get, uh, you know, to uh, get donations, you know, to run their programs. Yeah. But if you want to hear more about leader dogs, um, I've also been requested to make more leader dog videos. I have been doing uh, leader dog vlogs. I've got like three of them up. And the first one is where I showed where I would be staying for the two and a half to three weeks that I was there um, on campus. The second vlog was me meeting Alex for the first time. You know, when we call that dog issue day. So that was my first encounter with uh, with Miss, Mr. Alex here. And uh, then the third one is where I was just, where um, Alex and I were just showing the uh, equipment and stuff that is that is used for the dogs and stuff. Yeah. So you can just go on my channel and just scroll down till you can find those if you wish to see that. Um, otherwise, um, pretty much what is on this channel for any newcomers is uh, coloring book stuff and um, journals. I try to do... Oh, and, and you'll see the occasional fountain pen thing on there too because I am into fountain pens. I collect fountain pens and I use fountain pens. 99% of the time what I use to write with is a fountain pen. Um, so no ball points for this chicky. <laughs> um, although I do have uh, gel pens and stuff, but I use them mostly like if I'm going to color. Um, usually my writing, especially in my journals, is um, with a with, uh, fountain pen. So you guys tell me if you like this angle that I'm doing to crochet, um, if you want to see just my hands in the video, or if you want to actually see my face while I chat with you guys, um, I can do the camera at a different angle so that you can see me as I, you know, see my whole body or whatever as I crochet. But if you, if you guys want to just see my hands too, that's perfectly fine. Um, hopefully the, um, hopefully this will come out okay. I've got, um... I kind of got my camera positioned just, um, it's kind of positioned a little weirdly. I've got the tripod just kind of leaning up against my couch here. That way I can get a good angle. So um, it's not, it's kind of funny because it's not really, obviously it's not standing upright. So it's not in the sturdiest of positions. <laughs> so I'm kind of afraid it's going to fall over on me. So I have to be kind of careful. So if that happens, you know, I will be editing those parts out <laughs> because I don't think you guys want to see the camera go all wonky. <laughs> that would not be a cool thing to have happen. So, um, anyway, uh, just a little bit about me, I guess. Um, as I said, my name is Sharon and what you do know about me for those newcomers is I do have a visual impairment uh, because I had stated that. Um, but I am married and I have a, a daughter living at home. She is a young adult, um, but she still lives with us. Uh, we have four dogs. I have Caleb, who is a golden retriever. He's my retired leader dog. He is 10 and a half. Uh, and I have Alex, which I told you about. Um, I will insert a picture here of the two of them. And uh, I also have, we also have Turbo and Sheena. Now Sheena is a beagle mix, part beagle. And Turbo, we're really not exactly sure what he is. <laughs> um, he kind of looks like he's got the head and tail of an Akita. Um, 
But uh, we got Turbo and Sheena from a rescue organization, and they work with the, um, it's one of those places that works with uh, one of the prisons, and the prisoners kind of teach them obedience, and they train them and stuff, you know, to, to you know, to be good dogs. And then once they're, uh, once they pass their canine good citizen test, canine good citizen test is, you know, just this, it's kind of like a simple little test that the AKC does I guess and it just proves that your dog is just a, a good canine citizen a canine good citizen and so once they pass that little test then they are adoptable um, and so we got uh, turbo in 2010 early 2010 I want to say in February and at the time that we got turbo we had Caleb who was three he had just turned three, and we also had my then retired leader dog, Abby, who was also a golden retriever. She was like, um, oh gosh, what was she, 12? <sighs> yeah, she was 12, and um, now Abby was the dog that, the leader dog that I got before I got Caleb. Now, I had four leader dogs. I First of all, I had Charlie who was an Australian blue healer. And then I had Abby, who was a golden retriever, and and then Caleb and, and Alex. Okay. So Abby, um, as I said, we had her at the time we got Turbo. She was 12. and But we didn't have her all that long once Turbo came because um, in March or April, I want to say, she got diagnosed with lung cancer, believe it or not. And so within a couple of months, you know, we had to take her in and actually do the deed because um, she got so bad. So Turbo was, was here just a short while before Abby went. And so then we just had Turbo and uh, Caleb. And then toward the end of 2010, uh, we got Sheena. Um, from the same place that we got Turbo. It was a rescue organization that worked with the prison. And so then, of course, um, Caleb went through his working life and, and just retired in September. And then I came home with Alex in October. So, yeah, we have in, in our house here, we have more dogs than we do people. <laughs> Go figure. It just sort of worked out that way. <laughs> and uh, it just it just worked out that way. I don't know what to say, but it did. Um. And I am almost done with this row of half doubles, so we're going to, we will chain, oops, we will chain three in a minute and go on with the double crochets in just a sec as soon as I am finished here. So that's our dog story. Um, but as I said, I'm married, have a daughter that still lives at home, and got four dogs. And let's see, so some of my hobbies, interests that I love, um, I am a classically trained singer. Um, that was my major when I was in college. I took uh, quite a few years of vocal lessons. And I also play a little bit of piano, not much, but a little bit of piano, um, nothing to write home about. Um, and I do play the flute. But my main musical thing is the singing, and I have sung anything from, like, um, opera to soft rock. Um, I don't do jazz very much because I, I don't like jazz, and I don't like, you know, blues. Um, I, I just don't like the, the jazz stuff, and um, to me, heavy metal and rap is not music, so, you know, we're not even going to go to that category. S but my musical tastes are... Um, I like, you know, all different kinds of music. I love classical, of course, but I love um, oldies, like 50s and 60s music. Um, I love 50s doo-wop, and I'm just pulling out yarn. Um, I love 50s doo-wop music. Um, and I like some country, but, you know, as long as it's not too twangy, um, I kind of got away from listening to a lot of that. Um, it's kind of like, for me, if, if it's a... Uh, there's, you know, certain artists I like, that I like, but for me... Um, it's, uh, like if I like the song, then I like the song, you know, it doesn't have to be by a specific artist or like in a specific, um, genre. Um, to me, if I like the song, then it goes on my, my like list <laughs> kind of thing. So, yeah, um, 
that's how that's how that goes and what else um, I love reading love to read I am a huge Harry Potter junkie total Harry Potter nut and I'm a big fan of Stephen King. I also like Dean Koontz. I like um, Nora Roberts. There's, you know, just all kinds of, of stuff. And if it sounds interesting to me, I will read it. Um, I read mostly fiction. Although if it's a biography of somebody that I am interested about, then I will read that. Um, I got on a Helen Keller kick, you know, some years back. And I was reading a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff about her. Um, you know, because I had been into watching The Miracle Worker and stuff. And I had also found out a lot about Alexander Graham Bell because that was who my dog was named after. So, yeah, um, found out a lot about him. Uh, let's see what else. Love to read. Oh, and I did mention that I collect and use fountain pens. Um, I have mostly, I have a lot of vintage fountain pens, but I've also got like some modern things too um, that, um, that is still being put out. Vintage stuff. You know, th that was like back in the days when fountain pens were a uh, a utility, you know, kind of a must do, you know, because ballpoint pens weren't around or if they were, they were really expensive. Um, and I have over 200 pens in my collection. Yes, I have a lot of pens and it's ever growing. <laughs> um, and uh, of course, I have a lot of ink to go with it. Um, I'm always I'm always getting a new bottle of ink because I love my fountain pen ink. And I'm a bit of a paper snob like uh, my husband, you know, who also uses fountain pens and collects them. Um, he doesn't like he's not quite as picky about his paper. Like, I mean, he'll just use the, the cheap junk. But um and I mean, you know, sometimes it's all you have to write on. Like if you're in a setting where you have to write something very quickly down, you just, you got to use kind of whatever, whatever you got on hand. But um, like for my journals and stuff, like I have to have good paper. I have to have to have to have good paper. So to me, it's kind of all about that trifecta when you're, when you're do doing uh, fountain pens. You have to have some nice ink that you enjoy and a pen you love and of course paper that you can, that you can tolerate using. <laughs> <laughs> is the way I look at it. Um, and there's some really good paper out there. I love the Rhodia pads. Um, love the, love, love, love Tomoe River paper. Absolutely adore Tomoe River paper. I don't know what kind of wizardry the Japanese have with that stuff, but you know, they've, it's real thin. It kind of feels like Bible paper um, a little bit. I mean, it's not, but it's, it's kind of what closely resembles it, I guess. But uh, you know, but it's great for fountain pens. Like it doesn't bleed through and it can really take a lot of abuse. It's very thin paper though. Um, but, uh, and so your fountain pen ink is going to kind of sit on top of it. So it takes a little bit to dry. So you're not going to be able to, like, if you're writing in a, um, like, um, and I know that they got Tomoe River journals, you know, for example, um, if you write in a journal, with that kind of paper, do not close your book right away because you will smear your ink because a lot of times it needs a little bit to dry. So just a little tip there for you. <laughs> um, what else? Oh my gosh. Um, obviously I love to crochet and I can knit. Um, I like to knit, but I am a much better crocheter than I am a knitter. Um, crochet is what I learned first. So that is what I normally gravitate to. Uh, okay, what else? Um, well, I think I said I was an active member of the Lions Club. Uh, I love to color. Um, I'm into the whole adult coloring thing. Um, and this is for those of you that are new to this channel. Um, I love to color. So, and in my collection, I think I am pushing around gosh, I have to count them up and, and I, I need to do an updated collection video of them. But I have, I think, oh my gosh, you guys are totally going to laugh. <laughs> but I think I have like a 250, like over 250 books in my collection now. Yeah. I'm telling you. But, um, have I colored in all of them and all like, every single one of my books? No, <laughs> just because I have so many. Um, but I love to, you know what? I love to collect them too, because I mean, they have such pretty, pretty pictures in them. And there's some that, um, I probably won't color directly in the book. I will probably just copy the image onto some cardstock or something because, um, I have a couple of books that you just can't get anymore. And, uh, I want to, uh, 
I want to preserve those. So um, that's just some of the things I like to do. Um, I keep a journal. Um, I keep mainly a written journal. Um, I have a Hobonichi and it's been a while since I really did anything with my Hobonichi. So what I think I'm going to end up doing for next year, I found, um, the thing that I found with myself is that I have a very, very difficult time doing something like every single day, like doing the, because I ended up getting like one of those like five year, um, five year books, you know, where you, where you answer a question or whatever, or you write something every day for five years. And I found that I just, it, that I just can't keep up with it because like there's times that I just don't do it every day. And so I've come to the hard dis conclusion that just an everyday thing where you're kind of like, if, if you get a book, like with the Hobonichi, like you're kind of in where you have to put something in every day because it's got a page dedicated to it and it's already predated and stuff. And I've come to the hard conclusion that um, it's just not going to work out for me. I've tried it for a couple of years and I did not fill up the book because there's a lot of days that I missed. And so what I'm going to end up doing now, I love the idea of a Hobonichi and I love like doing the, the pictures and stuff, but what I think I'm going to end up doing, and they have something from Nanami paper that uh, I think it's called the Seven Seas Writer or something. And it's just a, a book. It's, it's the same size as an A5 Hobonichi. And you can use one of the Hobonichi covers for it and stuff. Um, although you can find like a nice A5 book cover, you know, for something like that. But what I'm going to do is it's just a, um, a journal of blank Tomoe River paper pages. And so I'm going to, you know what, I think I'm just going to use that. And uh, some people just call it an omni journal where you put just everything in it. Like you just use that book and you just do everything in it. And you, you just, you know, you stamp your date on there, you write your date on the page that you're using, and then you can use however many pages you want for a specific day. And if you don't want to do it every day, you don't have to, uh, because you you date your own pages. Like you you put whatever date on the page that you have. Whereas a Hobonichi, it comes predated, and you won't you only get like one day per page anyway. So I found that because this everyday thing just is not for me, and um, I hate to waste my money on something that isn't going to get used fully. So um, I'm going to do the omni journal thing. I'm probably still going to, I am still definitely going to keep a written journal like I always do. And I kind of do it like, I guess, diary style, you know, where I kind of talk about like what happened in the day and just, uh, you know, just talk about like anything that I feel like talking about in there. But um, for the Hobonichi style, I'm going to uh, do something um, that's more of an omni journal rather than the Hobonichi style where you are just working on like predated pages. And also in the Hobonichi, um, like those of you that have a Hobonichi, like in the first half of the book, I mean, you get, you get a, you get a yearly calendar. Like you get, um, you get like monthly pages, you know, like a monthly calendar page, which is great. But then you get a week on two pages and the columns for that thing is just really tiny. Like I have not found a use for those weekly pages. And, and I just, I feel like that I'm just not utilizing the book to its fullest also because there's just a lot of days that I don't have filled in um, because I just, I either couldn't be bothered or I didn't feel like it or I just had nothing to say. <laughs> And uh, so I've tried to backtrack and catch up on some of my days, but then I, I just found out, I just found that I was getting further and further behind. And so it just, it was more, it's supposed to be fun, but it was more of a chore than fun at that point. So um, I think I'm going to just go with the Seven Seas Rider and do kind of the same thing that you would do in a Hobonichi, but just have it more of a free form thing. And I think that'll be a lot better for me. Uh, but I'm still going to look on the Hobonichi's website because I know that they still have um, some very pretty covers. And I love to get their Hobonichi covers, even though they're expensive. But um, you get covers from Nanami paper too. And there's some really nice leather covers and stuff, but they are way expensive too. <laughs> so yeah, um, sometimes finding a cover that you like... Um, you're going to be forking out some money. 
So that is my journal plans for next year, um, for 2018. Um, I will have my written journal, of course. And I will. I need to do an updated journal collection video as well because it has been a while since I did one. Um, I have to go through and, and uh, bring them all out. But I will do an updated journal collection because I have a lot of Peter Popper press journals and quite a few of the Barnes & Noble ones and stuff. Um, but I have a lot of blank journals that I haven't gotten to yet. So I'll be doing an updated journal collection. I will also be doing an updated um, coloring book collection. And what else? Um, yeah, so if there's any other videos that you guys want to see. Um, oh, I was also requested to... Um, to talk about a character journal, which um, that's another kind of journal that I will keep. And a character diary or character journal is basically where you make up a character. And I've been and I love to write. Um, one thing I forgot to mention um, when I was talking about my interests is I love to write. I write fiction um, mostly in the the lines of um, romance or fantasy, that kind of thing. And so I write. Um, let me go back to. Let me backtrack a little bit and then I'll get back into the, the character journal thing here. But um, when I write, um, as I said, I love to write fiction. And I'm just scratching my hand a little bit. I have an itchy right hand. Uh, I've got a lot of, I've got some eczema on my hands and a little bit, and some on my feet. And so sometimes it, sometimes it gets really itchy. But anyway, so one of my interests as well is I love to write, and I, I write fiction, mostly romance or fantasy or romantic fantasy kind of thing. And so um, I write, um, you know, I've, I've been, oh my gosh, my camera's falling. So um, I, I um, what was I saying? I've been writing some short stories, and I also am working on um, a book that that uh, I've been writing. Um, I've, I've actually got one book written that needs a lot of editing, <laughs> and then there's another one that's in the works that I'm working on, too. But not only that, but I also love to play the, uh, the Sims games, and um, mainly I'm a fan of Sims 3, although I have the original Sims and Sims 2 and also Sims 4 and Sims Medieval and other Sims games. But I love to play The Sims. And so what I do in, what I also do in my writing is um, I take my Sims and of course I have like detailed backstories for them. And so what I will do is, is I have different blogs that I have for writing my stories. And if you go to the description section of my videos, you will find the links to the, the blogs that I have that my stories are on, my Sims stories are on that is. And and so what I do is I write the story and then I have um, screenshots from my Sims game of, you know, that I stage of my characters, you know, that, that go along with the story, you know, so it's kind of like, it, there's a lot of writing, but I've also got like screenshots for my game to support the writing. So anyway, um, for my character journals, what I've been doing is I have Sims of the, of the uh, characters from my stories, and I've been taking characters from my stories and doing uh, character journals for them because, to me, that helps me to get a lot into the heads of my characters and, and to be able to develop them more. So basically what a character journal is is you make up a character and you, write, you basically write their journal, you write their diary. Okay, so I've been requested to talk more about what a character journal is and to share some of the excerpts that I have and to talk about like how I do it and stuff. And so um, I'll be making a video about that in the near future. So be on the lookout for that. And of course, you know, more coloring videos and stuff are going to be coming up like book flip throughs. I do flip throughs and reviews of, of my coloring books that I get. Um, I have a pretty large haul coming up that um, I had just gotten from. Amazon. So that's going to be coming up. And so a lot of good stuff coming up on this channel. The journal collections, the coloring book collections, the haul, the flip through of books, as well as the character journal um, explanatory video and sharing and stuff. Okay. And then anything else that I can also think of, a lot of color and gabs, and if you guys like these crochet and chats, then um, I will 
do more of that. I've also done the occasional planner thing. Um, I think I showed off my planner collection and, and, um, uh, I've kind of showed, it's been a while, but I kind of showed the planner that I was using at the time. I could do a little bit more of that as well. It it seems to me, and it's, it's kind of weird, well, I don't want to say weird, but I guess coincidental, kind of, you know, where we can all identify with. But it seems like a lot of people that love to color, love to read. Um... You know, people that have been avid readers, you know, love to color. And, of course, if you're an avid reader, um, some avid readers love to write, like myself. And also, um, colorists or people like that also love planners. Corey Scherer, I know, does coloring, um, but she also does some planner things as well. So you can, you can kind of... Um, overlap with things that you love to do and if you're a youtuber you can overlap with things that you put up on your channel if you so choose you can make separate channels for each of your subjects but um, I tend to kind of overlap because now mostly I've been doing coloring like I said but um, but you know you'll also see the occasional fountain pen thing you'll see journals you will see um, once in a while planner stuff um you'll see quite a few hauls um you'll see a haul like when i can you know when i have a haul to show it's not every day of course because then otherwise i would be broke <laughs> but i do show a haul when i can and sometimes i have a very large haul and sometimes i go for weeks without having anything to show because i haven't bought anything it's kind of funny because when I shop, I tend to kind of do a like a, a big spree, you know, and then I have to lay off for a while. And then when I shop again next time, then it's another big spree and then so forth. Yeah. So I can never do anything like little by little. Usually, I mean, there's there's an there's there's an exception. But, you know, there's times that I just most of the time I don't do it little by little. Like I don't get like um, I don't get one thing one day and then wait like a couple of days and then just get another little thing like if I'm gonna shop I'm gonna shop <laughs> and I do most of my shopping online um I don't know I just I hate getting out in the big crowds anymore um and you will never ever see us at a Black Friday sale <laughs> in the actual store <laughs> um or an after Christmas sale <laughs> um if we take any advantage of anything like that we will do our shopping online thank you very much <laughs> just simply because it is um best that way and we can beat the crowd and we don't have to deal with driving somewhere or getting into bad weather you know that kind of thing um although you know there are times that i do love to just get into the store and you know actually put my hands on you know something that i am thinking of buying and okay i'm at the end of my double crochet so i'm gonna chain two I'm going to turn it back over and we're going to start our double crochet again. So I have one, two, three. Okay, this will be row four. I have to kind of count my rows because I have to keep track of what I'm doing. Okay. So, um, I, what was I saying? I tend to do my shopping online just because I hate, um, I hate just dealing with the crowds at, at, at store so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crochet just a few more stitches and I'm probably gonna go ahead and end this chat for now uh, because we've been going at it for quite a while I think and um, I've actually got a couple of rows of this done with you guys which is pretty awesome and actually, I, I'm finding that, um, now I love doing the color and chats, of course, um, and I will continue to do those, and, but that takes a little bit of setup, um, mainly because you have to get, you have to get your book, you got to get your, your pencils or whatever implements that you're using, and then of course you got to make sure that you have your pencil sharpener and your eraser and everything else you need, and I mean, you know, the same thing goes with the crochet too, but I find that setting up for the crochet and chat, um, that I was doing here. Now, I did a little bit of experimentation to, you know, to try to get at a good camera angle. And you guys tell me if you like this angle or if you would like to, you know, actually see my face while I'm crocheting. Um, if you'd rather see more of the close-up crocheting or if you just want to see me as we chat while I crochet. Um, 
you know, without actually seeing the close-up of the project, too. You know, that's, you, you tell me what you guys are after, okay? So, um, what was I saying? Um, oh my gosh, what was I saying? Holy crap, <laughs> the train is leaving the station here. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I know what I was saying. So, I find that, that setting up for the crochet and chat is a little bit easier, um, I've done the experimentation to see what the good camera angle is, so I, I think I know where I'm going with it. Um, should I continue to use this angle, and if you guys like this angle. Um, so, uh, I don't know, it just seems like it's a little faster and easier to set up for a crochet and chat, but I will definitely still continue to do the color and chats, okay? I will definitely do that. And if you guys... Um, for those of you that crochet, if you guys want like a crochet along or something, like I can find a pattern out of my hundreds of patterns that I have here, both on my computer <laughs> as well as in my books or wherever, um, I can find a pattern and we can do a little crochet along. And I will do mine on a video if that's what you guys would like. You guys tell me. You guys tell me. So for the coloring, we are going to be doing a color along in November, and it's going to be animal themed. Um, a lot of people have said that they would definitely participate in a color along, and so I thought we will just do an animal themed one, which would give a lot of leeway for whatever book people want to color in. And um, because there's plenty of books with um, any kind of animals out there, and it can be realistic animals or fantasy creatures as long as it's an animal right okay guys I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this chat here it's crochet and chat and let me just kind of show you just kind of how far we got on here so I started the the one row of half double crochets and I crocheted all the way to the end and then I did a whole row of of double crochets and then I've started this row of half double crochets and that's how far we have gotten okay so I'm going to say let me know if you like this kind of video let me know if you like this angle or if you want to see more of my face while I'm chatting with you guys instead of just my hands while I'm crocheting but that would mean that you're not going to see the uh, close-up of the crochet project itself you would you know you you get more of a a um, I guess a wide angle look, you know, because it would be showing my face and then just kind of showing um, what I'm crocheting um, kind of far off a little bit. You're getting more in the frame, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, um, which means that um, the crocheting would be at more of a distance. So let me know if you like this angle or if you want to see um, the rest of me in the video as well. <laughs> um, let me know if you like this kind of video. Um, if you want me to do a crochet tutorial or something, I can do that. Although you're going to find like many, 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 many videos out there that will teach how to crochet. Uh, you guys tell me what you want and I will try to, I will try to comply. Okay. So you guys tell me what you are after and um, I will try to make it happen. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this chat, this crochet and chat, this very first one that I have been doing. And you guys let me know what you think in the comment section. Leave a comment and tell me what you think. Hit that like button, of course. And subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more videos from me. But better yet, hit that bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. And you all have a great day. And we will talk to you guys in the next video. All right. Bye, guys.